Hi, my name is Kevin Oliveira, and I'm the Senior Product Marketing Manager for Data Security Solutions at Forcepoint. And today I have Erez Epstein with me. He's a Senior Consulting Sales Engineer at Forcepoint. And we're going to be talking about the topic of dark data and uh, what dark data is and how we can help you um, through um, uh, our, pro our data security solutions to be able to help you in terms of dealing with dark data, getting beyond dark data, and um, having a much more secure environment. So first of all, how much of your data is dark? And what is, what is dark data as well? One thing in terms of data, um, this is an IDC number. There was a hundred, they, they said that there would be 175 zettabytes of data by 2025. And um, that's just a really, really huge number. It's very hard to be able to g give some sort of, um, uh, of illustration of how large it is. But um, one of them is it's 175 with 21 zeros um, past it. And so it's, it is quite large. And so like a zettabyte, it's a thousand um, exabytes. A thousand exabytes is one petabyte or, or a thousand petabytes makes one exabyte and a thousand um, uh, uh, terabytes makes one petabyte. So you just see it's just uh, I'm, we're only starting out to get up to terabytes when there's some sort of reference to zettabytes. It's a huge number. The um, other part of it is among this data, the, the IDC also points out that 80% of it is would be unstructured. And so it's um, not in any kind of a, a easy format to be able to um, reference. And 90% of that data would be considered dark data. And dark data is it's some it's data in your environment that's not being applied for any business process, and, and there's no plans for use for it, um, or even to throw it out. There's no plans for it at all. It's just it's just in your environment, and that can be a problem, um, particularly from a security standpoint, because. There, this dark data can have PII, it can have sensitive information. And when you have this enormous amount of data that you really have no use of, or you don't have any insights to, you're not able to control it. And so it really, it really provides this huge platform for data exfiltration, where you could be losing data. And also you could be um, putting yourself at a risk in terms of um, ransomware or malware, any of those types of attacks, any types of breaches. Um, this is a quote from Forrester. They're talking about zero trust segment, micro segmentation. And one important part of zero trust that they believe is this area around classification and getting visibility and classification of all of your data. And so they, they point out that they believe organizations need to get serious about data classification. It needs to be super important, um, not only as, as data is being created, but looking at classification of data at rest in the cloud and on-prem. And if they fail, to, if they don't do this, they fail to understand what it is they're even trying to protect. And so it's uh, it's it's really key in terms of um, protection and providing zero trust. So where can Forcepoint Data Visibility help? This is the product, one of the products that we're going to be talking about today. The first step is to immediately deal with dark data and through a uh, discover and classify. Forcepoint Data Visibility is able to do very rapid scans across multiple clouds and on-prem, and you're able to deal with um, terabytes and petabytes of data in your environment, scan it and classify it. Um, it also leverages out-of-the-box business terms for organizing, categorizing, and classifying. And uh, Ares will be sharing those as far as these out-of-the-box terms um, that are um, you're able to make use of for um, controlling your data. And then last, you're able to do all of this classif classification and discovery um, powered by AI. And so um, Forcepoint Data Visibility makes use of a machine learning model, which has been trained by hundreds of millions of files and across um, multiple industries and companies to be able to give a very strong prediction in terms of what is the correct categorization, subcategorization, classification, all of those things. So we're ready for the uh, demo. Can we uh, switch over to that? Thank you, Kevin. So I've got here the management UI of the false point uh, data classification uh, tool, and I'm going to show you in a few minutes how easy it is to categorize, classify, and identify the dark data. So what I've got uh, here in my lab uh, is a system uh, already configured uh, to send a specific uh, SIFS share, and I've already initiated the scan. Uh, which is a very, very fast scan. And this is one of the great advantages of false point data visibility. The scan will utilize the AI and ML models 
in order to classify and categorize the files. And as you can see here, we've got two options, sensitive files and non-sensitive files. And each of the classification ties, tags is applied. So we've got a bunch of uh, classification tags already configured in the system, and they will be applied automatically to any of the files, any of the dark data, which is being identified during the discovery scan. Are these then, um, these are ones that come out of the box then, these particular tags? So all of these AI and NML tags uh, come out of the box. And if we need to customize or, or add any other tags, we can do it uh, easily. Great. So following uh, the scan, uh, which is said would be really, really fast uh, scan, uh, comparing to the large uh, set of files uh, that we are going to scan, I will first see a report. We have got two main interesting reports. First would be the classification report, and I've got it already open here. In the classification report, I can see, for example, a business document uh, distribution, and I can see all of this based on the AI and the ML tags. So we can see the policy procedure, 12 files, audit, 11 files, and I can see the total count of each subcategory here below. If I want to have a deeper dive, for example, based on the financial document distribution, I can see it as well. So this is mm -hmm. a 19 pages uh, report, which gives me greater visibility into the file coverage and the file distribution. So this shows the subcategorization. You're able to see what 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 what's in your environment in terms of the data. Do you have just the categorization level? Are you able to look at that? So here we can see the document uh, categories as defined by the system and the AI models. And we can see that most of my documents are of technical documents. And again, we can see below the total count of each categories. In the next pages, as I said, I will have a deeper dive drill down into each of the categories, what they mean, and inf more information about the files. Great. So this is, it looks like it's just great information for reporting to management, as well as then for yourself as a data security admin, you get a sense of what is the data you're working with. And then um, maybe the next steps as far as for what data you need to be paying attention to. And particularly, it looks like with this company, it's, it's lots and lots of technical documents. It's um, a big part of their data. Yeah, yeah. So this is actually a tech company. So it makes sense that most of the documents will be technical. And mm -hmm. I think the next step, again, would be to understand uh, what kind of risk are they opposing uh, to the organization. Mm -hmm. And then we've got another specific report for that. If you go back to the management UI, I will go to the file analysis report. So this is like a management report, high level report. Mm -hmm. A really short one, but a very precise one, as you can see. So it will give me information about the classified files in the system, how many are classified, what is the change since the last scan. Of course, we want as many files to be as classified as possible. How many files were found to be sensitive, again, by the AI and ML models, and how many of the files are PII files. Again, we are always comparing to the previous scan, and we've got below a management recommendation uh, what to do with those files. If I go a little bit more down, I'll get information about mislocated files. So for example, this is mislocated PII files. And why are they mislocated? Because they are contained in the folder which are not according to the policy set by the system. So this is a very, very simple recommendation. Move the PII file to the appropriate storage which again might be encrypted and with better permission control. And another important part of this report will be the stale files. Stale files are files that are old, out of date, and maybe no one have touched them or changed them for a long time. So the recommendation here would be delete it or encrypt the stale files which contain PII. Getting uh, out of this report, I will want to get some more deep down information about the file. So I will go to the result tab and let's check a specific category. So first, I want to check only the high risk files and I'm going to check the HR document. So as you can see, 
uh, we found uh, five files. Those five files are, are considered high risk. And the reason they are considered high risk is because of the combination of the category, subcategory, that they are containing PII and the access permission of those files. Within those files, it would be very easy to identify this stale file, CV Maker CV2. And the reason it is stale, because we can see that it was last opened a very long time ago, actually in 2020. So for me, the next step as a security administrator would be actually to export this report, send it to the Active Directory or the security administrator uh, to remediate those files. One possible step of remediation would be maybe to move them to a safe storage or encrypt them. Okay, great. So I see, uh, especially with that last report was great in terms of being able to report to management, plus you're able to see the, the kind of progress you've made between scans. This one's very good as far as getting very specific to IP address and path where a, a specific file is and then um, your ability then to do the remediation. Yeah, so this is a specific report. And as you can see, we've got a whole bunch of filters that we can check uh, based on them. If you want to check a specific uh, subcategory or you check for a specific classification tag or only PII. And based on this, uh, we can find a lot of meaningful inf for information about uh, the dark data uh, which was found. Right. Yeah, again, too, with the reference to dark data, you've got categorization, subcategorization, classification. You can see the PII, you can see the risk level. So you see all of those things now that you wouldn't have had before. Um, and so, and then you could, um, um, how would these be effective as far as with DLP? What could you be doing with that? So the, the next step would be to configure a specific uh, policy uh, in the DLP system to check for those specific classification labels. So I would want, for example, to enforce policy on the, on the classification tag of HR documents or any other uh, relevant uh, tag that I can see. All of these are in the metadata of the files and we can recreate a combination of those in the policy. Uh, so we can uh, track uh, the files which are flowing out of the organization and are being used. So for example, there can be certain files which I would want to block completely. And maybe for the other set of files, I will just want to audit them and send notification. Uh, once they are being used or being sent after organization. After all, some of those files are relevant for the business. So there are certain uh, time uh, that we wouldn't want to block them completely. That's great. So out of all this, you've got just really rich information about each file individually. Um, and then you're in just so much better of a position in terms of protecting them and uh, protecting the sensitive data. Um, well, good. Thank you so much, Eris, for your uh, for this demonstration. And um, anyone watching this video, we re recommend you do look at some of the other ones around this product, Force Point Data Visibility. Um, you can see them on our YouTube channel, and uh, we encourage you to watch those as well. Thanks. Thank you.